is the Lord. If you are awake, I said, Praise the Lord. Welcome everyone to the Bible study tonight in Jesus' name. Especially our workers. We just finished our workers' retreat on Saturday. And the Lord has infused us, energized us, injected us with new power. Ah. And in all the house fellowships and everywhere, for the brothers, for the sisters, anywhere, and then for the children, as well as for the youth and campus everywhere, I pray this new energy of the Spirit will work mightily in every life in Jesus' name. There will be unity in the church. Unity between pastor and the members. Let me hear your amen. Unity between all the areas and sections of the work in Jesus' name. And unity in every family. Between husband and wife, parents and children, between brothers and sisters. Unity in Jesus' name. And the Lord will make his work, the work of the kingdom, to prosper in our hands. In Jesus' name I declare. Father, we thank you tonight. We bless your name for the Bible study. We pray, Lord, the study today, as every time, will penetrate every heart. And will dig up things that ought not to be in our lives. And then the Spirit of God will sweep them away from our lives in Jesus' name. Make all of us better Christians, better believers, better sisters, better brothers, and better families in Jesus' name. And I pray that whatever your word reveals... To correct, to reveal our shortcomings, and then to come up and live the way we ought to live. None of us, by the foolishness of the flesh, will resist your word in Jesus' name. But the wisdom of the Spirit, you help us to take your word at face value and to live by that word. That everything you want accomplished in everyone, a brother, a sister, a husband, a wife, a father, a mother. Oh Lord, we pray everything you want to establish and correct, you will do it in Jesus' name. Thank you Lord because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church of the living God said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. You can see them. Today we're still coming back to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I we're reading from verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1. It says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. He's talking to brethren. Brothers and sisters, he's talking to men and women in the church, he's talking to everyone that has come into Christ. They have repented of their sins, they have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, and they have come into the family of God. And he says, There is one thing we must not be ignorant of. He says, Now, at this time, now, in this period, now, in the period of your life, as you are following after the Lord concerning spiritual gifts, I would not have you ignorant. You see, the Corinthian church, they were even manifesting the gifts of the Spirit. And it says they came not behind in any of the gifts of the Spirit. And yet, even though they were manifesting the gifts, and they were exhibiting the gifts. 
He still said he didn't want any of the brethren to be ignorant. Why did he say that? You know, there were people that manifested the gifts in the church. But when it came to their personal lives in the home, in the office, and in their community, they were totally ignorant. They thought the manifestation of the gift was only when you come together like this and somebody is speaking in tongues, another one is interpreting, another one is prophesying, another one is manifesting the word of wisdom, another one the word of uh, knowledge, another one discerning of gifts, another one faith, another one healing, another one the working of miracles. They thought it's only when they came together, but now he said it's not only pastors it's not only preachers it's not only apostles it's not only workers all the brethren when you scatter everywhere anywhere you are i want you to understand the gifts of the spirit that's why it's good you have come and I pray that whatever ignorance you have, whatever ignorance we have, the Lord will wipe everything away in Jesus' name. Revelation will come to you. Understanding will come to you. And instruction will come to you. And the instruction you have, the revelation you have, will be profitable in your personal life in Jesus' name. Now today, we're considering the subject, the gateway into the goodness of spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts. He mentioned it right there in verse 1 now concerning spiritual gifts. And it's good. That's why the apostle, that's why he concentrated on these verses to tell us and to enrich us with these spiritual gifts and the goodness in it, we need to enter into that. As we got the message of salvation, and then we knew the way of repentance and the way of faith to enter into that salvation. We knew about sanctification and the goodness and the godliness in sanctification. And we knew the way of consecration and faith to enter into that sanctification, the baptism in the Holy Ghost, the endowment of power from on high. We heard about that. And we knew the gateway to enter into that. Now, if we just heard about salvation in one service, and then we say we're running through the Bible, and we want to cover First Corinthians, Second Corinthians, Galatians, and all the books of the Bible, and we rush on. And even though we have preached about it once, the people who are not saved are still not saved. We, if we preach about sanctification just once, I will say we're having Bible study, want to cover the Bible. We're going from Genesis to Revelation. And then the people who are not sanctified, and they're not sanctified, we cover ground, but we do not enrich the lives and the experiences of the people. That's the reason why, although we studied last week, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 to 11, Yet, we need to understand now, how do we enter, what's the gateway into the goodness of spiritual gifts? The Lord will open the door before you. He will open the gate before you. And I pray every one of us will understand what the Lord has provided and will be able to enter in, in Jesus' name. I will enter in. You will enter in Jesus' name. Three things we're looking at today. Number one, opening the gateway to spiritual gifts. That's actually what Paul the Apostle was doing. He's opening the gateway for them so that those of that church, Corinthian church, he was writing to those who have not entered, he'll throw the gate wide open. And then everyone will know that this is for me. And as they recognize that this was for them, they'll be able to enter. Number two, obtaining guidelines 
to the sublime gift that is the highest of the gifts, that is the greatest of the gifts, that is the gift that is essential, necessary, and indispensable, a way to obtain guidelines for the sublime gift. Number three, outstanding growth through supernatural gifts. The Lord wants to lavish the gifts upon his church. Why? He wants the church to grow. He doesn't want the church to remain at the baby stage, at the infant stage, all throughout the church age. He doesn't want the church to be doing merry go round and covering the same thing they have always known. He wants the church to move forward and to move upward and to have growth, not just ordinary growth, but outstanding growth through the supernatural gift. I pray in your personal life, you will grow. In your family, you will grow. As husband and wife, each one will grow. And then you are united together and the growth moves the whole family of parents and children forward. We will grow in Jesus' name. And if there is anything in any brother, anything in any sister that is impeding the growth, retarding the growth, hindering the growth, as the Lord gives us the knowledge of his word. And then we go on our knees and we say, Lord, this is what I want. I want visible manifest growth in my life spiritually domestically in the family and in everything that we do i pray the lord will so make us thirsty and hungry you and i and we all each one of us we will grow in jesus name outstanding growth through the supernatural gift we're coming to number one number one opening the gateway to spiritual gifts look at that again in first corinthians chapter 12 verse 1 it says now concerning spiritual gifts brethren i would not ye should be ignorant look at uh, matthew chapter 24 and we're reading from verse 45 matthew chapter 24 we're looking at verse 45 uh, sorry, it's Luke, God bless you, Luke chapter 24, we're reading from verse 45, then opened he their understanding. That's the Lord Jesus Christ is being with the disciples for three and a half years. He touched them on the field. He taught them by the mountain. He taught them in the house. He taught them with every method possible, the greatest of teachers, teaching them for three and a half years. And yet, after he rose again, he understood their condition and he opened their understanding that they should understand uh, the scriptures that's what he wants to do every time and as we come to the bible study uh, the things we still don't understand there are things we still don't know about our personal action about our activities about our attitude about the thing that will move us forward and make us have progress in the kingdom of god and so as we come we're not just coming to you know bible study and then nothing personal nothing pinching nothing uh, penetrating is revealed unto us we hear the word and that penetrates and that punches uh, pinches us and we say I'm not all right in that area I'm not up to the mark in that area and then as he opens our eyes of understanding we're able to move up I will move up and you will move up in Jesus name in our three things we're looking at here number one reference to ignorance about spiritual gifts paul the apostle led by the spirit of god he made reference to the ignorance of the church 
the ignorance of the brethren. Number two, revelation with instruction on saving grace. Revelation with instruction on saving grace. Anytime the revelation comes, there must also be instruction. You've given me revelation. What do I do with the revelation? How do I handle that revelation? How do I apply that revelation to myself? And you know, as Paul the Apostle was talking about spiritual gifts, something high, something great, something exalted, yet it showed the basic about grace and about salvation the saving grace and then number three the recipients of impartation for surpassing glory recipients those are the people that receive they do not only receive the knowledge in the head they receive the impartation in their hearts and in their lives and their lives were never the same anymore the same as you receive today, your life will never be the same again. Say a good amen. Number one, reference to ignorance about spiritual gifts. It tells us, and we're reading that for how many times now, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant, making reference to ignorance about spiritual gifts it tells us in romans chapter 1 verse 11 romans chapter 1 reading from verse 11 it says for i long to see you that i may impart unto you some spiritual gifts to the end for the purpose ye may be established that's why he didn't want them to be ignorant. Look at verse 13. In verse 13 now, I will not have you ignorant, brethren. I will not have you to be ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes are purpose to come unto you. He wanted to come and impart unto them the spiritual gifts. And he said, I don't want you to be ignorant that I will be planning to come to you, but I was led, I was hindered hitherto, that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. Let's look at number two here, and it's the revelation. Revelation with instruction on saving grace. He told the people how they came to the Lord. And then he revealed to them how others too can come to the Lord, whether a Jew or a Gentile, whether a man or a woman, whether young or old, how we can have the grace of God, the grace that saves. He gives instruction concerning that. It tells us in Romans chapter 1, reading from verse 16. Romans chapter 1, verse 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. It says the gospel, the good news about the crucifixion of Christ, about the death of Christ, about his resurrection, and about the fact that now we can come to Christ and look up to him and believe him and trust him and embrace him that is the one that took all my sins away and I let go of all my sins and then I depend upon him by faith. That gospel, that good news, that message of salvation is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. No exception. Everyone that believeth. That's why you can have confidence in the fact I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and I am saved. And you can talk to other people too. And you can make them believe the good news and believe the gospel. And they can be saved to the Jew first and also to the Greek. It tells us in verse 17, in verse 17, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. 
the righteousness of God, you know, it's not the righteousness of the Pharisees, that one, anybody can brush up himself and manifest that, but that one doesn't save. It's not the righteousness of the, of the, nat of the natural man in natural religion or traditional religion. Anybody can get to that, that kind of religion, but that doesn't save. But the righteousness of God demonstrated by Christ, offered by Christ, given by Christ, that you throw away all your own self-righteousness and then you come to the Lord and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and it says, as it is reaching, your faith must be as it is written. Your repentance must be as it is written. Your believing on the Lord Jesus Christ must be as it is written. If it's only according to denominational dogma, that doesn't say. If it's only according to a philosopher's opinion, that one doesn't save. If it is only a mouth-to-mouth -mouth tradition, that one does not save. But the gospel, the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ coming to you and you receiving that as it is written, the just shall live by faith. I pray that life, eternal life, the life of God in man, it will be in every life in Jesus' name. And yes, the gateway into that salvation, you turn away from sin, you turn to the Savior, you believe Him and accept Him, forgiveness will come and freedom from sin will also come. In Titus chapter 2, reading from verse 11, Titus chapter 2, reading from verse 11, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. You cannot give excuse. I didn't know about the grace. Of course you know. That's what we, we've been talking about. That God by his mercy, God by his love, offers forgiveness free of charge to everyone. Because Christ Jesus has paid the price. And because he paid the price now, what he paid the price for, the salvation, is now available for everyone. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. In verse 12, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly laws, we should live soberly. You know, a real believer who appreciates the salvation of God, who has got the salvation of God, does not live a frivolous life. He does not look at, you know, what is going on around and just to, just to play and just to waste his life and just to squander his time. He becomes frivolous and careless and he is uh, being frivolous as if he's playing a game. Now, a believer doesn't do that. A believer says Christ will come at any time. And because of that, I want to demonstrate and I want to reveal the grace of God that has appeared unto me that teaches me to live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. And then he says in verse 13, he says we're looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, verse 14, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity. The redemption of Christ doesn't want to leave any sin in any life. We must understand that that's the very basic and that is the revelation and the instruction on saving grace that when that grace comes into our lives, it doesn't want to have any sin remaining in our lives for any reason, any category of sin, whether it's deliberate sin 
or it is a common sin, or it is habitual sin, or it is sin peculiar to some men, or some sin peculiar to some women. We don't have that in the grace of God that brings salvation. He has given himself that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. They're not zealous of bad works anymore. They're not zealous of evil works anymore. They're not zealous of unrighteous works anymore. They're not zealous of degrading works anymore when we're saved. And then He sanctifies and purifies us. He makes us peculiar people who are zealous of good works. Look at number three here. Number three, the recipients of impartation for, super, for surpassing glory. The reason he wants to have that impartation in our lives, we learn about the spiritual gifts, we reach about the spiritual gifts, and we point, plunge ourselves into the revelation and the provision of the spiritual gifts is so that he can prepare us for glory. You'll be for glory your life you'll be for glory and when the trumpet sounds all the bible studies we've learned and all the messages we've heard in ev everywhere as we've had the real undiluted word of god i pray when the saints go marching in you'll not be found missing your name is there already and then you'll move up unto glory to glory will you go in Jesus name and let's look at Romans chapter 15 we're reading from verse 19 Romans chapter 15 verse 19 it says through mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God so that from Jerusalem and round about unto Illyricum. I have fully preached the gospel of, of Christ. It says, with signs and wonders, with the power of the Spirit of God, I have preached the gospel of Christ. You see, preaching the gospel of Christ demands the help, the support, the endowment, the power of the Holy Spirit. And Paul the Apostle said, although he came much after all the other apostles, although he came much after uh, Peter and James and John and the rest of those initial apostles, yet when he came in and the Lord gave him the commission to go preach the gospel to every creature, all the people he could find, he prayed. He received the power. He received the Holy Ghost. And that endowment of power made him to go everywhere, preaching the word effectively. The same thing with you, my brother. The same thing with you, sister. Sisters cannot say that's only for the men. All those people in the upper room, there were women there. And when the men received, the women also received. Are we not uh, running the same race, men and women? We all need salvation, men and women. Are we not going to heaven, follow peace with all men, and holiness without which no man shall save the Lord, men and women, anyone a man, anyone a woman, anyone a brother, anyone a sister, that wants to get to glory, must have that peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord and then all of us have been promised the gift of the Holy Ghost it says it's for your sons and for your daughters I will pour out my spirit on that day it's for the men it's for the women and it is for every one of us and Paul the Apostle added you will have you will possess and then in the strength and the power of the Holy Ghost, you will do what others like you have never done before. I didn't hear your amen. amen. The man will do 
what other men like him the same education the same civilization the same instruction the same denomination what other men like you what they have never done you will do in jesus name the same thing for the woman the woman that comes and you are saved and the grace of god washes up cleanses up all sin from your life and then the sanctification and holiness and the power of the holy ghost comes upon you and you become an endued woman you become an a rich woman in the kingdom of god empowered by the holy ghost you my dear sister there you will do what others like you have never done in jesus name and that's what the Lord is telling us. And that's why we have that impartation. Impartation so that we'll go to surpassing glory. Look at Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3. We're reading from verse 19. Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 19 And to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge that ye, that ye, who is that ye there? I can't hear you. Any sister part of the ye there? Where are you? It will happen. It says that she might be filled with all the fullness of God. I'm sure you know. There are many people that come to church and they never think they say they are saved they're sanctified but they never think they never pray they never project themselves present themselves in such a way that they say god i want to be filled with the fullness of god and of course you know the traditional understanding of men can aspire to that but women how can they aspire to that the women think leave it to the men and let them pursue and let them preach and let them do everything they ought to do and let them possess but it says here all of us each of us a man a woman will so have the fire will so have the desire will so have the passion will so have the purpose of heart that as i come and hear about all this the spiritual gifts and the impartation i want to have everything that i might be filled with all the fullness of god may it be fulfilled in every one of our lives in jesus name let's come to point number two now number two obtaining guidelines for sublime the sublime gift obtaining guidelines look at first corinthians chapter 12 verse 7 but the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit with her underline that every man you know every time you see that it means every person every person is not referring to men the gender the man without the woman when it says whosoever shall call on the name of the lord shall be saved the whosoever is every man everyone every person the man as well as the woman and he says the manifestation of the spirit is given is granted to every person to profit with her and now he talks about the first one look at verse 8 in verse 8 for to one is given by the spirit the word of wisdom the word of wisdom now we need to understand the word of wisdom is coming from god from the spirit of god and that word is like 
just a word, just a word. It's like you have an ocean. And that ocean is full of water. And then you take a glass or a cup and you dip it into the ocean. And you have just a part, a small part, a fragment, a little of that ocean. The ocean still remains, but you have just a glass or a cup. God is full of wisdom. And his wisdom is as deep, is as wide as the ocean. A word of wisdom is just a little, a fragment of that ocean of wisdom so that you can make use of that wisdom for the moment and for the hour. And wisdom is essential. Look at Proverbs chapter 4. Verse 7, Proverbs chapter 4, reading from verse 7. Wisdom is the principal theme. That's why you cannot just gloss over it and say, okay, to one is given the word of wisdom, and then you run to the other, run to the other, then you finish that section in uh, one study, and now you go to, you know, chapter 12, uh, you're not studying from verse 14. No, you don't do that, because wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, Get understanding. Get understanding. Get understanding. Now we want to have understanding on the wisdom. Three things we're looking at. Number one, possessors of the word of his wisdom. Possessors of the word of his wisdom. Just a cup out of that white ocean watch of his wisdom number two partakers of the gift of the word of wisdom there is a situation and that situation demands solution and then god's wisdom comes from heaven and he grants you that wisdom partakers of the gift of the word of wisdom. Number three, partnership with the God of all wisdom. Partnership with the giver of all wisdom. Let's look at number one, possessors of the good word of his wisdom. You know, people can miss out this. They're praying, they're fasting, they want the gift of the word of wisdom. But there's another thing the Lord has given us. He has given us the good word of his kingdom. That's what you hold in your hand. From Genesis to Revelation. In the word of his wisdom. There are people that overlook that. Neglect that. And they do not know that this is the wisdom of God. And they're running after just a cup from the ocean of his wisdom. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 4. We're reading from verse 6. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 6. Keep therefore and do them. For this is your wisdom and your understanding. As you look at Genesis all through to Malachi read, understand, believe, embrace, apply, for this is your wisdom and your understanding. As you come to the New Testament, Matthew, all through to the epistles and all through to Revelation, here is wisdom, the wisdom for salvation, because from a child, Thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise unto salvation. 
and therefore the word of his salvation has been given to us and the wisdom to live the wisdom to live a life that is pleasing unto God is revealed in that word the Bible and this is the collection of divine wisdom and to have all the provision you need to have and the possession you ought to have is recorded for us in the book of faith wisdom that's why you will not toss the bible aside and then you close your eyes and you are shaking your head and shaking your body and you are praying and praying and praying what are you praying for i'm praying for the gift of the word of wisdom how about the bible uh -uh, i don't read that anymore all i want to do is to have the word of wisdom Solomon had the word of wisdom as a gift. And when those two women came, and one said, the living child is mine. The other one said, the living child is mine. The wisdom to help other people, the word of wisdom came to him. All right. The one says, the living child is mine. The other one says, the living child is mine. Bring me a sword. Let divide the living child into two. Ah, the mother of the child said, don't do that. Give her the child. And Solomon said, that is the mother. That's the operation of the word of wisdom. But the whole of the book of Proverbs chapter 1 all through to chapter 31 is the word of divine wisdom and solomon himself having the word of wisdom a cup out of the ocean of god's wisdom he overlooked the book of proverbs that he himself had written and he made a wreck of his life we must understand that this book, the Word of God, is the wisdom of God that will prepare us for eternity, possessors of the good Word of His wisdom. It says, keep therefore until then, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations which shall hear all these statutes, the commandments of God, all these statutes, the testimonies of God, all these statutes, the precepts of God, and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding of people. Not only one isolated leader having the word of wisdom, but all the people all the citizens, all the members of the body of Christ having the Bible, holding to the Bible. This book shall not depart from thy mouth, but you will observe to do everything that is written therein. Don't just wait for word of wisdom as he give. This is the book of divine wisdom he has given unto you that you may have good success and prosper in everything that you do i pray that this word will be precious to everyone in jesus name amen psalm 1 1 9 1 19 we're reading from verse 98 psalm 1 19 verse 98 thou through thy commandments has made me wiser than mine enemies for they are ever with me it says is this word of god is the book of divine wisdom the bible i read i understand i apply it's that book that makes me wiser than mine enemies verse 99 it says i have more understanding than all my teachers 
for thy testimonies and my meditation. You meditate on that word. It gives you more understanding and more wisdom. Verse 100. In verse 100, I understand more than the ancients. I understand more than the older generation. I understand more than the philosophers of the world. I understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. Second Timothy chapter 3. In Second Timothy chapter 3, we're reading from verse 15. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. And that from a child that was known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation, wise unto conversion, wise unto a godly life, a righteous life, wise unto the final salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Verse 16, all scripture, Gen Genesis, Revelation, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect. The word of wisdom is Solomon did not make him perfect. God had given instruction to the children of Israel. When you set up a king in the land, he must take the book of the law and recopy everything, write word for word, and read and obey all the days of his life that his heart may not be lifted up Solomon abandoned that. I have wisdom. I have wisdom. Any judgment, anything that comes, I will receive inspiration from on high. I will manifest the words of wisdom. And then the book of divine wisdom you overlooked. Because of that, he was not perfected. It's the word that gives us the wisdom. The wisdom to live that will perfect us, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Number two. Number two, we're talking about partakers of the gift of the word of wisdom. Already we have seen First Corinthians chapter twelve, verse eight, for to one is given. By the Spirit, the Word, just a Word, a fragment of the Word of Wisdom. And you remember, I've already quoted the case of Solomon. And then you remember the case of the Lord Jesus Christ, as the Lord himself was tried and tempted. Should we pay tribute to Caesar or not? And the Lord knew their heart, and he didn't say, pay, don't pay. But then he said, bring me a coin. And he showed him the coin, whose superscription and image is on this coin. And he said, Caesar's. Then he said, give unto Caesar the things that belong to Caesar. What of wisdom that wisdom you have if you read romans chapter 13 that you ought to obey those in authority and the dignity and the honor that belongs to the king you respect them and you honor the kings and the governors that one is in the world and if you have the word the Spirit of God will bring that in your heart. And then he said, and unto God, you give what belongs to God. That's what you'll find also in the word. My son, give me your heart. 
that belongs to God, give that unto God. The point is that the book is like the ocean of wisdom and the word of wisdom is like a small cup. Out of that ocean, you don't only concentrate on the word of wisdom and have just one cup and then you overlook and you neglect and you reject the ocean of the wisdom of God. I pray that God will make us wise. His word we will not neglect in Jesus' name. Look at Luke chapter 21, reading from verse 15. Luke chapter 21, we're reading from verse 15. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom. Amen. You surrender your mouth to the Lord. You surrender your mind unto the Lord. You surrender your personality unto the Lord. And whatever comes, as you have been reading the word of God, the Lord will grant you the wisdom to apply the word. And when a word of wisdom is needed, necessary, he will give unto you in Jesus' name. For I will give you a mouth and a wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to give, say, or resist. And Deep Alive Church said, yeah. number three, number three, the partnership of the God, the giver of all wisdom. You understand this? When you have a need, you go to God, you pray and pray and pray with importunity and he gives you a fragment of his wisdom a little of his wisdom but now the God of all wisdom abides with you and he lives with you and because you're walking together like Enoch walked with God the God of all wisdom like Noah walked with God, the God of all wisdom. Like Abraham walked with God, the God of all wisdom. Like Jesus said, I will never leave you, I will never forsake you. I am with you until the end of the world. And because he's with you all the time, and wisdom resides in him. Whatever you need of the wisdom of God, because you are in partnership with the God, the giver of all wisdom, wisdom will never lack you. And you'll never lack wisdom in Jesus' name. Look at Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. Isaiah chapter 41, we're reading from verse 10. Fear thou not. For I am with thee. The God of all wisdom is with you. And any time you need his wisdom, just turn to his by your side right there. I need wisdom to solve this problem. You have a family problem as a woman, as a wife, as a mother. You are concerned over your husband because of this and because of that. And I don't have the wisdom to talk to, her, to him now it will not be wisdom to go and put a particular tract others me i cannot place it on his pillow because when he reads that he will understand that what he's doing is hurting the family others me i cannot it doesn't solve the problem and then to open a particular page of Women Mirror where they describe the family problems and all that and how the man became humble and he yielded himself and everything became soft and then you open that page, you make his bed and then you put that copy of the Women Mirror with that page open there. That one will not solve the problem. But when you have a problem as a wife, as a mother, as a sister, and there you know that God is with you, 
and he says i will never leave you i will never forsake you you can easily get to him and he will give you the problem to solve the, pro the, 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 the solution for the problem he will do it in your life in jesus name but you know what lay wisdom will not solve a family problems action like this reaction like that will never solve a problem it might even increase the problem and he will say the man will say uh-huh you're preaching at me i saw your women mirror that you put it clear it off i don't want to see that and then uh, there's greater problem there but if you rely on the lord the god of all wisdom and the giver of all wisdom all problems in your life in your family will be solved in jesus name and then the same thing with the man you know the wife is doing this and doing that and then you've read daily manner the daily manner of that day actually will solve the problem this woman will know that this is not the right action and then you say my wife did you read the uh, daily manner of uh, today and uh, she said i've not read it go and read it go in fact it's like the writer, the author, knew that this is what you need. My brother, that's not wisdom. It's not going to solve the problem. You see, all these, uh, you know, acting like this, acting like this, acting like that, so that we can manifest the wisdom that will change the husband, or change the wife, or change the man, or change the woman, it does not work that's why the problem has been there for so many years but as you rely on the god of all wisdom and the giver of all wisdom solution will come easy in your life in jesus name i lost the amen in isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 fear thou not for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Somebody shout, Amen. Amen. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17. Ephesians chapter 1. Verse 17, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom. The spirit of wisdom. You are walking with him. You are living in him. You are reading his word. You appreciate his patch and his fullness in your life and he knows you delight in him every time and every moment and he is the god of all wisdom and he says the god of our lord jesus christ the father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him May God do it in every life. What do you think? That everything that happens, that you don't pick up the old, old action without prayer, without divine guidance, without the inspiration of the Spirit of God, and without a quickening in your spirit you just feel if i do it this way the problem will be solved if i do it this way everything will be all right and you just pick it up from the old trash of ideas that you got before it will not solve any problem now my brother my sister what's your goal is it your goal to just annoy your husband that's all your goal that's what you'll get is it your goal to just annoy your wife 
That's all you get. Or is it your goal to have a peaceful family, a loving family, a united family as the choir sang unto us, or to have a joyful, happy family? Because the more joyful you are, the more healthy you will be. If that's your goal, then you allow the God who is your partner, who is living with you, who says, I will never leave you, I will never forsake you. You allow him to give you fresh wisdom. And the fresh wisdom of God will bring the joy and the peace and the unity that you want in your family as well as in the church. I pray that God who is always with us will always speak revelation to us and will have his wisdom to solve all problems in our lives, in our ministry, in our church, in our place of work, in Jesus' name. We're coming to number three now. Number three is outstanding growth through the supernatural gift. We're coming to First Corinthians chapter 12, reading from verse 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. To profit with all. To profit with all. When the gift is from God, when the action is from God, it will profit you, it will profit the house fellowship, it will profit the zone, it will profit the district, it will profit the group church, it will profit the church in the region, it will profit the church in the state, it will profit the church globally. When you have the gift that God gives, it makes the gift to bring growth and progress and profit. And what are the gifts? Verse 8. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, that's what we have dealt with, and to another the word of knowledge by the same spirit, not the human spirit, by the Holy Spirit, not an evil spirit, by the Holy Spirit, not a worldly spirit, by the Holy Spirit, not the knowledge that comes from the bush spirit and the forest spirit and the mammoth spirit and the spirit of the unregenerate man or regenerate woman but the knowledge that he gives us by the same spirit and when that knowledge comes and we have the gift of that knowledge there will be outstanding growth through that supernatural gift three things number one the gift of the word of knowledge. Number two, our growth by his word and knowledge. Number three, the goal of the word of his knowledge. Look at number one. The gift of the word of knowledge. To one is given by the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. The word of wisdom to another the word of knowledge by the same spirit now that kind of gift was that again think of the wide ocean the knowledge of God is as wide as the ocean he has knowledge of all the billions of people in the world, that's knowledge as wide as the ocean. He has knowledge of all the billions of people that have lived from the time of Adam and Eve to Cain and Abel to Enoch to Noah to Methuselah to Abraham and to the end of the world. He has knowledge about the billions of people 
of the past unto the future. That's like an ocean of knowledge. He has knowledge of the earth. He has knowledge of the stars. The scientists have told us now there are billions and billions of stars. He has knowledge of the whole solar system. He has knowledge of all the galaxies of heaven. He has knowledge of all the microscope, the telescope of men can see. And he has knowledge of all that the telescopes of men cannot see. That's knowledge as wide as the ocean. And now the word of knowledge is a little word a little knowledge out of all those wide areas of knowledge just like a little cup out of the ocean that's the word of knowledge and when he gives that that helps us to have victory and to have the growth we ought to have let me give you one or two examples in john chapter one Read him from verse 47. John chapter 1, verse 47. And Jesus saw Nathaniel coming to him and says of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no God. Verse 48. Nathaniel says unto him, Whence knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said unto him, before Pete Philip called thee, when thou wast under that fig tree, I saw thee. And in verse 49, Nathaniel answered and saith unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God, thou art the King of Israel. The word of knowledge. When Nathaniel was called by Philip, he said, can a good thing come out of Nazareth? And then Philip said, come and see. And then as Nathaniel was coming, the Lord said, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no girl. Have you met me before? Have you seen me before? Where did you see me that you know me? Uh -uh. When you were under the fig tree, even before Philip called thee, I knew thee. And that word of knowledge made him to say, You are the Son of God, thou art the King of Israel. But you understand, Jesus did not live every time by that word of knowledge. He came to the temple, and the book of Isaiah was given to him. And he opened the place where it was written concerning him. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to open the eyes of the blind, and to lose those who are in captivity, and to give the knowledge of God unto the people. And he closed the book, and the eyes of all the people were fixed upon him, and he said, This day is this word fulfilled in your eyes and every time whatever he did he said that the scriptures might be fulfilled he did another thing that the scriptures might be fulfilled the knowledge of the world he had that and then once in a while there was the gift of the word of knowledge you remember Gehazi Gehazi had drawn after Naaman and he said, my, my master just saw uh, some people now, and we need uh, changes of raiment and this and that. And uh, your neighbor said, be, be uh, happy to have this much. And then he carried it in, uh, and then hid it somewhere. And Elisha said, Gehazi, here am I. Where have you been? I've been nowhere. You didn't go anywhere. Did not my heart follow you? 
when that man stopped and gave you this and gave you that? Is this the time to receive money and changes of raiment and all that? Behold, the leprosy of uh, Naaman be upon thee. And the man was leprous and he went out white as snow. And he lost his ministry and lost his health and lost his dignity and lost everything. The word of knowledge. But now let's look at number two. Number two, our growth through his word and his knowledge. Our growth through his word and knowledge. Look at Second Peter chapter 3 verse 18. In Second Peter chapter 3 verse 18, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Grow in grace and grow in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's not that special word of knowledge. This one is knowledge out of the out of the gospel according to St. Matthew. Learn about him. This is the knowledge out of Mark, out of Luke, out of John, and learn about him as you reach those gospels. You will hear what the Father said about him. You will hear what the angels said about him. You will hear what the demons said about him. They said, We know thee, thou art the Holy Son of God. You will hear what the disciples said about him. You will hear what the Spirit of God said about him. Come to the come to us and you will see what the Father God of heaven has spoken about him and then you come to the epistles to Romans all through to Revelation when you come to Revelation in particular you have the knowledge of what heaven is revealing about him and you grow in grace as you grow in the knowledge of our Lord our Savior Jesus Christ to whom be glory both now and forever and everybody said in first Peter chapter 2 first Peter chapter 2 we're reading from verse 2 as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word desire the knowledge the basic knowledge of the word Desire the revelation knowledge of the word. Desire the basic doctrines of the Bible revealed in the word as you are growing up. That ye may grow thereby. That she may grow thereby. The word of knowledge, just a little fragment of the knowledge of God as wide, as deep, as the ocean and the sea, just a cup, just a little. But now, the knowledge of the world that you read, that you study, that you believe, that you embrace, for faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. That's the word you will hear, and then your faith will grow. And when that faith grows, you will speak to every mountain. It is not by the word of knowledge you speak to every mountain, but by the faith that comes, growing faith. As you hear the word of God, and then you speak to that mountain, every mountain will move out in your life. This word is powerful. This word is mighty, as powerful as the God of the word, as mighty as the God of the word. And as we read that word, then we have the word and the knowledge of the almighty God. It will do wonders in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. Number three, number three, the goal of the word of his knowledge, the goal of his word, of the word of his knowledge. Look at James chapter 1, I will read him from verse 18. Of his own will begat he us by the word of truth. 
He begat us not by the word of knowledge. We're not born again by the word of knowledge. We're not sanctified by the word of knowledge. We're not filled with the Holy Ghost by the word of knowledge, but of his own will begat he us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Look at verse 21. In verse 21, he tells us, he says, Wherefore, lay aside all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. The word which is able to save our souls. Look at Ephesians chapter 5, reading from verse 26 that he might sanctify and cleanse it by the washing of water by the word the word the word the word that is the message you are hearing the word that is the knowledge of the word of God saves us as we believe sanctifies us as we believe and then in verse 27 it says that he might present it to himself a glorious church the word of knowledge will not present us to him a glorious church the word of wisdom that little cup from the mighty ocean will not present us to him as a glorious church but the word, the word of scripture, the word of truth, the word of his doctrine, that he, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that you'll be holy and without blemish. You'll be holy. You'll be without blemish. The Lord will so cleanse you as he reveals his word to you and your life and your heart and your attitude and your action will be pleasing unto him in Jesus' name. In First Thessalonians chapter 2, reading from verse 13. First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. For this cause also, thank we God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God, that's not the word of knowledge, the word of God, the word of God, the gospel, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh in you that believe. Are you here? Your amen. amen. The word will work effectually in you. Everything that should not be in you, in your spirit, in your soul, in your body, anything that is rotting there and is going to give you any problem, the word penetrates you now and it will wash up, it will clear up anything that will hurt your spiritual life, your physical life, your professional life, your family life, the word will wash off everything. And this word will work powerfully in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. You'll be stronger. You'll be healthier. And you will be better than you were this gone by in Jesus' name. Better, brighter, broader, bigger, I see it on you. Why are you there? The word will affect everything in your life. Why don't you open your mouth and talk to the Lord and say, Lord, we thank you for your revelation today and we thank you for what we have learned. Lord, effect it, perfect it in every one of our lives. And the Lord will make you better, brighter, bigger, broader, higher, deeper, in Jesus' name. Pray and carry your blessings home.